Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about heaps, which are an implementation of priority queues. We sort of talked about priority queues last time, but today's talking about the particular particular way of implementing priority queues, which uses this structure called a heap. And I've drawn one here by the tree. Uh, it has those two properties, the ordering property, which says that the child key is always bigger than the parent key, or the child priority is always bigger than the parent priority. This is in a, a min heap, so the smallest thing is at the top. And the second is a structural property, which says that uh, this is a complete tree. So there really is no choice about the structure, the shape of the tree, once you know the number of things that are in it. So then it's fixed. But the ordering structure, the ordering property says, for example, this must be the smallest of these three. And that has to be true everywhere in this tree. Okay. okay, that was your lame warm-up. Are you warmed up? You don't seem warm. You seem very quiet. Well, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow's a midterm, um, but you probably knew that. And um, homework three is due a week after that. Um, I, don't have it. I haven't looked at it either. No, actually, I have looked. Um, Okay, so we want to talk about the operations to perform on these priority queues, uh, in particular the operations in implemented using a heap. So that's what we're planning on doing. And uh, I think we uh, actually didn't talk about this nifty storage trick, but I said it was like very nifty, I think, in the last thing, but we never talked about it. So this is the nifty storage trick, which you're going to say this is a lame storage trick. But anyway, that's okay. It's really nifty. If I have a complete tree and I number the nodes in the complete tree in level order, so root gets one, then two, three, then four, five, six, seven, then eight, nine, ten. I can treat those as indices into an array, and I can record all of the keys or all the priorities that are in that tree. I can record them in that array. For for reasons of consistency with Cinda's class, we are not using the zero location of the array. There's nothing there. You could do it the same thing, uh, shift it over to the zero, but we're not doing that. Okay, so, so, so what? So you have this array now that's full of keys, and the question though is, well, how do you treat this array, which is a linear structure, as a tree? And the key is using the indices to navigate. So the indices and arithmetic operations on the indices allow you to go from parents to children. And so this is what we have to fill in, and I am going to ask you to do that. So I tell you, left child of i, i is an index into the array, and the question is, what is the index of the left child of node i? So for example, uh, if I looked at the node whose number is 5, its left child is at index 10. I will give you, let's say, a minute. Is that too much? 30 seconds? Everybody good? Yeah? All right, well, let's just do this. So what is the index of the left child of node i? Thank you. Everybody can scream out. And the right child? Great. And the parent? 
or something. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the root and the next free position in the tree. Now, this is a hard one to answer unless you know that n is equal to the number of items. n is the number of keys that are or priorities that are in the heap, what's the next three position? 10 plus 1. Now, typically heaps are not represented as tree structures with nodes and pointers to children. Typically heaps are represented in this nifty way as an array. It just, it's kind of nice because it saves you all the pointer space. You are only storing the keys or the priorities and presumably the data that goes along with them. So it's space efficient uh, and it also has great cache performance because everything is local except it doesn't have really great cache performance because if I'm looking at a particular node that's in location 6 and I want it child, that will be down here in location 12. So as I get farther and farther down in this tree, it gets less and less local as I try to descend a path in the tree. However, it's better than having allocated it in memory using, uh, using uh, new operators. Um, there's an interesting thing about this, though, which is Remember we talked about implementing a priority queue before using a, an array, right? We looked at, let's implement a priority queue using a sorted array. And when we implemented it using a sorted array, we had performance that was, well, on insertion, less than desirable. It took linear time to insert an element into a sorted array. Here what we're hoping to get is what? What kind of performance do you think we will be getting out of this type of a structure? Log n. The height of a complete binary tree with n things in it is log n, and maybe you can already sort of see how remove min is going to work, and maybe you can already see sort of how insert is going to work, uh, but they're not going to be touching every key, not every position in that, in that entire tree. And yet, the representation this representation is an array. So we looked at sorted arrays and we looked at unsorted arrays and both of them were undesirable because one of the two operations took linear time. With this thing, which is neither a sorted array nor a completely unordered array, we can get performance which is log n. Which is kind of nifty. I mean, that's pretty cool. At least I think it is. Um, Okay, so let's see how to do one of the operations. For example, let's look at insert. Insert is kind of straightforward. You know that when you insert a new item into a heap, that there's only one spot where that new item can go. So structurally speaking, this new item three has to be put in that position or else the tree is not a complete tree. sad thing is that after we do that, even though we have the, so the structural property is okay, after we put it in there, the sad thing is that we've ruined the, the ordering property. So we have to fix the ordering property. And the way that we do that is by saying, well, three might be too small to be the child of 10. Remember, children have to be larger than their parents. So, how would you fix that? You do the obvious thing. You say, swap. So now the parent becomes a child, the child becomes a parent, and you get this picture. And then you do the same thing. You check to see if the parent is still larger than the child, and if it is, then you swap. Now, is this dangerous? I mean, am I going to ruin the ordering property? Or do I have to worry, for example, about what's going on over here? 
No, because prior to the swap, I knew that 8 was bigger than 5, and if 3 is smaller than 5, then certainly 8 is bigger than 3. So I can perform the swap and not worry about ruining the other children or the other child. And so then what do I do? Well, I just keep going. And I check to see if... And when do I stop? Well, in this case I stopped because I ran out of tree. Like now tree is at the root and there's nowhere to go. Well, what's the other stopping condition? Yeah, the parent is already less than the child. The parent is, for example, if I was trying to swap this thing up and the root node was 1 instead of 3, I wouldn't swap. I'd stop. Is that okay? Does that mean the ordering property is obeyed everywhere? Do I have to do more work? Structural? Right, the thing inside of the node is the is the priority of the item. It's not the item. No, we don't have to worry. I mean, the, the property, when we get to this point and we find out that the parent is already smaller than we are, since we know that we've preserved the heap order property up until that point, we haven't destroyed it, like we didn't ruin 8 when we did the swap up to 3. Now, at this point, the only thing that we have to worry about is the relationship between 3 and its parent. And if that's already set, we're good. Here we go. So that's insert. Everybody got it? And you could sit down and write code in under perhaps 10 minutes that would do this. Good. Because this is showing up too blurry. So let's see if it works. Oh, it's magic. Okay, so this is this is the insert code. It has a helper function which is called heapify up that it calls, which is a recursive function. It used to be called swap up. And so I'm going to probably say swap up, and you will now know that swap up means heapify up. But what it does is, is what exactly what we said. When I plug something new in, when I insert something new, it goes into size plus one. So I increment size and I stuff the new thing into the last spot in the array. And then I call heapify up with that index, that last index size, and it will perform this check to see whether it should swap up the element. So it goes into heapify up, has an index i, and it first of all calculates the index of its parent. So what do I write in the first spot? This is crowd participation time. I divided by 2. C++ level already gives me floor. Uh, and then it checks if HI is some relation to HP, and if it's true, then it swaps. What's, what's the relation that would cause swap to occur here? So if the child, the current child, is smaller than the parent, then we want to swap the child with the parent. So if h of i, the key in location i, is smaller than the key at the parent, then we swap. By the way, h is the, h is the array, which represents the heap, which represents the priority key. So we sort of have two levels of implementation here. We've got an array that's representing a heap, or representing a, a tree, which is a heap, and which that's also being used to represent a priority. Okay, and then we perform a swap, and then what do we recursively call heapify up with? 
You're going to do great. Um, what's the running time of it? Yeah. Would it be hard to modify it to do what? Oh, sure, you can. There's no problem. This code will just work. You're only forced to swap if your child is less than the parent. If it's equal to the parent, then everything's good. Um, okay, what's the runtime? Come on, you already you already know the answer to this question. Log in. But how do you know that? So you understand this. I, I'm just going to point this out because this is kind of cool. It may not have been the case before you took this course. But the argument that you're giving me for the running time of this code is talking about a structure. It's talking about a tree. It's talking about a property of that tree that you know, which is that it has log height. And you're saying the operations that this code is performing are basically walking up the tree, and it can only walk log n height. Now, suppose... Oh. oh, you are. Okay. Let me give another argument first. I mean, this is great, right? This is like a beautiful, this is absolutely what you're supposed to be learning in this course. It's a course about data structures and their analysis. And that's exactly what you've done. And that's something that probably you weren't thinking about code that way before. Maybe you were. That's great. In this case, we're trying to do it a little bit more formally, uh, thinking about the code. But I think that that's a great argument. That's a great reasoning for it. But suppose that, suppose that you had a brain injury and you forgot about that stuff about trees and things like that. And suppose that you wanted to prove just from this code that the running time is going to be log n. What's the easiest way to convince somebody just by pointing at this code that the running time is log base 2 of n? Now you can say what you're going to say. Increase uh, uh, so say resize Oh, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I forgot about resize. Yeah, in case, some cases you want to resize the code, resize the array. Then, if, if we start with the right side, and then each time we are with the file, like we are, we branded the divided by two, so it's a lot for the side. Yep. So, this argument here, P, the parent, sorry, sorry, sorry. This argument is half of the original argument. This is i divided by 2. So whenever you make this recursive call, you're calling it on an argument that's half the size of what it was before. And the number of times, how big could the argument initially be? It's the size of the array. Now how many times can I divide the size in half before it gets down to something which is 1? Can I fall out of the recursion? That's log n. So because of this, the argument uh, is have, which implies number of calls is, well, it's basically log base 2 of n. And each one of the calls takes a constant amount of work. So, but. I, I encourage you to think about algorithms the way that you originally described the running time. That's exactly what this course is trying to get you to think about, is abstracting out away from the code and thinking about the structures that are involved. And it's kind of cool to do that. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell you. There, if you would like to look at animations of uh, uh, insert or remove min or other operations on heaps, then you can go to this website, which is a visualization website for, the, for 221, this course, and there's heaps that have been implemented there. Uh, 
Looks like there's something else I wanted to ask you. Eh, we'll come back. Any questions about insert? The other thing we have to do is remove min. Remove min also seems pretty easy. Where's the minimum in a heap? Location one, if it's, an, if it's in the array representation. At the top of the tree, if it's in the tree representation, it's at the root. So we know what to do. We know that when we remove min, we want to yank the root off of this tree. I'm going to cons I'm going to still draw these things as trees as opposed to arrays for most of this. Okay, uh, okay but if we do that, if we remove two, um, we no longer have a complete tree, right? It's now rootless. It's like two trees. So what do we do? Well, we know that after we remove min, we know exactly how many elements are in the tree. It's one less than it was before. So you know exactly what the shape of the tree is going to be. And this makes you think, well, 11 sticking down here, that's a bad position to be in. Because the new tree that we produce will not have a node at that position. It will be gone because the complete tree has got one fewer things in it, and that's the one that's got to go. So just following that sort of thought process, you might say, well, let's get rid of it now. And that's what we do. We take the last thing in the heap, and we put it in the top. Okay, now we've restored the, uh, whoops, the structural... We've restored the structure so that it's a complete tree, but sadly, we do not have the ordering property. So what do we do? Well, it tells you what to do right at the bottom, so don't read that. Just, well, do, because what do you do? You want to swap it down, right? you got to move it down from being the root. If it's too big to be a root, then it's got to go down. So how do I do that? Well, this says I should swap. This says swap 11 with 4. How did I pick 4? That was the smallest child. And that smallest child was smaller than the root. And so I did the swap. It could be that one of the children is smaller than the root. It could be that one of the children is a smaller than 11 and the other one is not. In that case, do I have to perform any swaps? If there's only one of the two children that's smaller than 11, do I have to perform a swap? Yes, I do. Because it has to be the case that every parent, no, sorry, every child's parent is smaller. And if there was one... Like if one of these was 12 and the other one was 5, 5 would have to be the parent of 11 and 12. Okay, so I check the two children. I, check, I take the smaller one. I swap it to the top. And now I'm in this situation. And I know that I've restored the heap property for the upstairs parent. But now that I've swapped down to this position, I could be in the same situation. That 11 is too big. So again, I check to see which is the smaller and swap with my smaller child if it's smaller than I am. And that allows me to get to this point. And at this point, I am trying to fix that subtree. And I check this subtree and it says, well, 11 is smaller than 12 and 14, so I can stop. Everybody good? You know, this is so simple. Like, the, the coding involved in this is like, right? I mean, really, there's nothing to it. That's insert. That's remove. See, here's remove min. It also has a helper function, which is heapify down, also known as swap down, also known as sift 
down, also known as chain down and some other weird thing. Anyway, if you look this stuff up, there's multiple names for these things. It doesn't matter what you call them. It's just the thing that does the swapping down. Yeah, it's such easy code. It's hard to believe that there are three bugs in this code. Hard to believe. Let's walk through it, and while we walk through it, you'll find the bugs. Yeah. You tell me, do you just pick one? Suppose I had something that looked like this. I've got 10 up here, and I've got 5 over here, and I've got 3 over here. What do you think? Try 5. This I can't do. That I can't do. Because 5 is bigger than. Two. And it must be the case that every node has a parent that's bigger. So the only one that's possible is to move 3 up. And then I'm okay. So take the minimum. We'll, we'll see how that's done in this code. Um, let's start with the helper function. This helper function is uh, what happens when you, you know, you eventually put the, the, you pull the last item in the heap and you put it, that's what this does. Let's just walk through the thing in order. So you start off by saying, here's the minimum, it's at the top. Then you move the thing in the last position, the H size thing, you put that into H1, you put it up at the top, that's the 11. We just stuffed 11 into the top of the tree. And then we say decrease the size of the heap because now the heap has one fewer thing in it and heapify down at starting at the root position, which is position one. Okay, then we start going down using heapify down. We first set S here to be I. S means smallest. S is going to be the smallest index of the three things that are, we're, we're considering. The other two, besides i, are left, which is i times 2, and right, which is left plus 1. So I have the three indices of the nodes that are involved, i, left, and right, and I have small set to be i. So the smallest one is supposed to be i, but it's not really. I have to check to actually make sure it is, and so I do the following. I say, if left is less than size, what do you think that does? Yeah, checks if the left child is in the array, because it could be that we're at the bottom of the tree and the left child is not in the array anymore. It's not in the tree. So this checks to make sure that the left child, left child exists. Okay, and then if it does exist, then we check to see if the key at the left child is smaller than the current smallest key that we're talking about in the three, which is the root at this, or the, the parent at this point, it's checking to see if it's smaller than that. And it says, if it says yes, then it says, well, then I'll update small to be the left child. And then it does the same thing for right. So if right is less than size, again, does the right child exist? If yes, check and compare against the smallest thing so far, which could be either the left child or it could be the parent still. And if right is smaller, then S gets updated. The key, the priority is smaller than the, than the index S gets updated. And then when we get to this point, all it does is say, well, did I make him, did I, is, the, is the root the smallest? If it's not, so if, F, if S is not equal to I, then we have to swap. And we perform the swap, and then we uh, continue recursively by doing heapify down from the new position, which we just swapped it into, which is position S. OK. 
Okay, three bugs. Anybody get one? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm okay with this. I mean, I, I just check which is the smallest. So here's a check that says that left is less than S. I want to swap the smaller, the, yeah, so what, I, what S is going to be after I execute this code, S is going to be the smallest index, the, the index of the key, of the node that contains the smallest of the three. And that's what I claim. And so it starts off as being here, and then it checks this guy, and it says, okay, sorry, that's an S, not a five. So S is originally, I'm going to draw it as a pointer, but it's not a pointer, it's an index. Right? S is just an index. I'm a little bit nervous because somebody's looking at me like I'm talking in some strange language. But uh, remember, S is just an integer. It's just an index. Anyway, S is the index that's, that's telling us about the place where the smallest thing is. And it starts off being the root. And then I check to see if H left, which is 5. I check to see if 5 is smaller than H of S. And it is. So then S would no longer be this. S would go here. And then I check, is H right smaller than HS? So HS is 5. H right is 3. So 3 is smaller than that. And so it would remove that. And it would point it here. So it's getting the smallest. I don't think that's the problem. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not the problem. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the problem. I might get a seg fault in the conditionals. You mean these? Right in S? Yeah. Those are two of the bugs. This less than should actually be less than or equal to. That should be less than or equal to. That should be less than or equal to. Ooh, that's a good bug because I didn't even see it. But no, it doesn't need to. Because what do I do? What is how is swap in the increment? What's the signature for the swap function? I didn't show it, but in C++ there is actually a swap function that's in the library. It takes references. But when you change the, the HI and HS, they're actually changed in the caller's frame of reference, and so they're actually switched correctly. I mean, in the old days, you would pass on that. That's a good, good comment. But here you use reference frames. Yep. Yeah, that's the problem. If size equals 1, there's a problem. Because then when you decrement size, size is now 0. And now I'm calling heapify down at 1, and then bad things will happen. Well, the bad things depend on what happens to be in location 0 of the array. But in order to prevent that, you probably want to put an if here. If size is bigger than 0, then OK, you can go ahead and perform heapify down. I thought I'd put the chest in there. I mean, I think you're right that it won't do anything. But I put the test. Okay? All right, great. What's the runtime of this code? Don't be shy. Log in, thanks. And... You know why? Because there's a constant amount of work that's done at every level of the tree as you swap down. That's the reason that's in your head for why it works. What's the reason in this code for why it works in log in time? 
What's the thing you can point at and say, here's the thing that's making this go? Yeah, how big is S? If I call heapify down, I know S is not equal to I. That means S is one of its children. So S is going to be either 2 times I or even bigger. So S, oops, S is greater than or equal to 2 times I if this heapify is this heapify down is called again, and that implies that we're doubling our argument every time, which implies that the number of executions is basically something like log base 2 of n before we get down to something which Right. That's it. You could use a tree, and it's not faster, it's just that it's more memory efficient and faster because of cache performance. It's not really faster. I mean, you could do the same thing with a regular tree just be following pointers instead of doing indices. The same thing. Okay. Uh, any other question about remove? So that's remove. There's one other operation that I want to talk about, which is, um, oh, quickly, which is uh, called build heap. So what build heap does is it takes an array that's unordered, scrambled up, but it doesn't have anything in the first position because of the strange indexing that I'm doing. Well, I give you this array, and you say, oh, it's an array. I can treat that like a heap. And if I do, it has the order, it has the structural property, right? It's a, it forms a, a complete binary tree, but, uh, but it doesn't have the ordering property. Like for example, 12 is bigger than one of its children. Five is bigger than one of its children. 11 is bigger than one of its children. So the red nodes are, red nodes are bad. Our parents with small children. Not that parents with small children are bad, but they are in heaps. So these are the bad nodes, and we have to fix this ordering property in order to construct a heap out of this set of, of elements. Now, why you would want to do this, perhaps, for example, you want to sort the array. And what you can do is build a heap out of it, and then start performing remove min operations to take the minimum out one after the other, and that will give you this sorted array. which means you sort of can guess how much time it's going to take to build a heap from a non-heap array, right? Can you guess that? What's the fastest that this could possibly be? Yeah, that's what you would think. That's the exactly the correct answer because we know that every sorting algorithm, and this would be a sorting algorithm, takes time n log n. But the build heap part of that is not the end. Not only do you have to build the heap, but you have to perform n remove mins. And it turns out that the n remove mins take n log n time. The build heap operation can actually done more, can be done more efficiently. It can be done in linear time. Wow, he said. Because look at the options we have. Here's one option. We could sort the array. If I sorted the array, would the array then be a heap? And if I sorted this thing from smallest to largest, would that array be an array representation of a legal heap?
Okay, that's a good argument. So what is the argument that says yes? What's the, if I ask you on a midterm, which I won't do because it, this isn't on the midterm, but I can ask you on the final. If I ask you to prove that a sorted array is a legal heap, what do you have to show? I mean, the ordering property, I mean, the, the structural property is done, but the ordering property, how do you show that? That's all you would have to write, what he said. So the index of a parent is smaller than the index of its children in our heap representation. And in a sorted array, things that have smaller indices have smaller values. So if I'm at the beginning of the array, my value, my priority is smaller than if I'm at the, towards the end. And so since we have that property, every parent its two children, which occur later on in the array, will have larger values than the parent. And that's all we need. So this works. And it takes, as we know, theta of n log n time. In the best possible world. And if we use insertion sort, it would be worse. This weird looking code what it's doing is it's inserting into the heap, starting at position two, starting with item number two, it's inserting into the heap the, the, the nodes one by one. So it starts with a heap of which just, just the root, which is 12. And then it says, look at position two and insert that into a heap. So it calls heapify up on this little heap. So it's going to swap this guy up to his proper position. It's like I just inserted 5 into this tree. So it converts this into 5, 12, and then it inserts the next thing, which is 11. And it inserts it here, and it checks to see whether it has to swap that one up, that 11, and it doesn't. It's okay. It's there and then it keeps going so every time what it's doing is inserting a new thing like the number three it inserts three into the existing heap and it performs swap up or heapify up from the newly inserted node and it's just like an insertion you swap this guy all the way up to the top we would end up with something that looks like this three 5, 12, 11. And we keep repeating. Okay? So as we do this, the heap grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And so we get a sum, for the running time, we get a sum of log the height of the tree. So we're going to get log of 1 and then log of another one, and then log of two, 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 and then log of three, and then log of three, and then log of three, and then eight times, and then log of four, 16 times, and then etc. That also is theta of n log n. That's a good exercise for you to do. The third option is called Floyd's algorithm. So this one line of code is Floyd's algorithm. How do you spell Floyd? I think there's two L's in the middle one. Anyway, Floyd. Robert Floyd. He's a professor at, he was a professor at Stanford. Um, sort of a contemporary of Donald Knuth. Um, this is probably what he's known for. He did a lot of stuff. He was a brilliant, brilliant theoretician. Floyd Warshall. Yeah. So the Floyd Warshall algorithm is this guy. And he did this. And this is probably the thing that he's known for most. Maybe for the uh, Anyway, he did this weird thing, which was 
instead of performing insertions to bubble things up, he said, start at the bottom of the tree and create tiny little mini heaps by performing heapify down. So this starts at the, this i equals size over two is that node right there. What's special about that node that I just circled? Well, it's halfway through the array, but what's special about being halfway through the array? It's the first node that has children. It's the lowest node in the tree that has children. So this node six, seven, this guy doesn't have any children. And not only is he at, not only is he at position six, but he's also got the value six. So he's really six. But this guy who's at position seven, he has no children. So it's this this guy right here that's the first thing that has a child. It's the first one that could possibly be wrong. All of these other ones, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, they're all just fine because they're just single nodes. So what Floyd's algorithm does is it builds the the heaps bottom up. It fixes this heap by performing swap down or heapify down on that little heap. And then it goes to five and it fixes that heap. Because it knows the two subtrees are already heaps, fixes the whole tree by performing heapify down. Then it fixes the next heap and it keeps going like that. You'll see it here in my lovely graphics. Everything that's got a triangle around it or a triangular shape around it is, uh, is a heap that's been established to be a, a, a valid heap. So we start with only the leaves are valid heaps. And then after the first step of this Floyd's algorithm, we get one bigger heap. And then after another step, two more heaps merge into one bigger heap. And then two more heaps merge into one bigger heap. So at every step, we're merging heaps together to form bigger and bigger heaps until eventually we get to the end and we can perform the last merge that merges everybody together, which didn't fit on this slide. Okay. Does this make sense to you, this algorithm? It's going from the bottom up. And this is the weird part. I mean, that's not even bad. But the reason why his name is attached to this is because this takes theta of n time. So it's a linear time algorithm to do this. And that, that is a little bit interesting. Because how many of these, how many of these heapify down operations do we perform in this tree? Something like n over 2, right? I mean, we basically don't touch the leaves, but we do heapify down from everything else. And you guys know that the number of nodes that are non-leaves in a tree like this tree are about n, is about n over 2. So about n over 2 heapify downs. And we know how long heapify down takes. It takes big O of log n time. So I've got n over 2 times log n that is not linear. That's n log n. So what's wrong with my analysis? Well, it's not wrong. It's, it does take big O of n log n time. It just happens to also take big O of n time. Where am I sloppy? How could this possibly be true? Floyd must have been really smart to actually believe that this was going to work. Oh, it's time to go. You'll have to wait until next time. Let me just tell you one little piece, though. The number of times that I perform Heapify down on short trees is much more than the number of times I perform it on big trees. So in fact, I only do it once on a tree that has height log n. 
The other time I'm doing it, I'm doing it on trees that are smaller. Okay, so we'll talk about it next time.